preaching the gospel, winning folks, and evolution's the greatest obstacle, so let's just tackle it head on. Let's chop right at the root of the tree. Evolution is the philosophy behind all sorts of evil things going on. Let's just go right for the root. What cause do you live for? Is this it? Sports? Oh, wow, he can throw the ball through the hoop. Ooh, wow. Who's going to care in a thousand years? Does anybody know who won the Super Bowl 10 years ago? Does anybody care? Doesn't matter. All those grown men out there fighting over that one ball, they can all afford to go buy their own. <laughs> it's not sinful, it's just stupid. You pay a guy $5 million to carry a pig bladder down a cow pasture. I mean, come on. <laughs> Get all them big lugs out of the way and I'll carry it down there for you. you know? <laughs> We've gone nuts. The Bible says, He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver. The people that have millions of dollars, do you know what they want? More. The people that have 50 pairs of shoes in their closet, you know what they want? More shoes. The people that have a big house, you know what they want? Bigger house. People that have a fast car, you know what they want? Gas. Faster. I guess, yeah, true. <laughs> It takes us a whole lifetime to figure out things in this world do not satisfy. People that play golf, you know, five hours a week, you know what they want? Oh, six hours a week. Seven, eight, nine. Hey, did you know if you spend thousands of hours practicing at golf, get the grip just right, you know, shoulders curled, this thumb and finger make a V, point it toward this shoulder, same thing over here, knee slightly bent, shoulders curled, club face perpendicular to the ball, bend the right elbow first. If you practice for thousands of hours, someday you will be able to knock a ball into a hole in the dirt. <laughs> and the angels rejoiced. Oh. <laughs> we have gone nuts. The Bible says, seek those things which are above. Set your affection on things above. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. It's not of the Father, it's of the world. And the world passeth away. I remember when I was working at General Motors, working my way through college. Every night we'd put together 250 some trucks. Assembly line, you know, come by, put, do my thing. Another one comes by, we do my thing to the truck. And I thought, you know, everything I'm doing here is going to burn. It's all going to burn. When we were working at M&A together, brother building cabinets, we worked hard, had a good job, but I said, you know, this is all going to burn. It's all going to burn. I want to invest my life in something that's going to last forever. Get our videotape on how to make money and spend it God's way. See the way you really ought to spend your money. Number 10, listen for the trumpet. The Bible says, The Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, the voice of God, the, trump of the, arch the voice of the archangel, the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Southern Baptists, go first. But hey, we're going next, okay? And then... I pick on the Southern Baptist a lot. I, I, used to, I speak in a lot of their churches, too, and I'm Baptist myself. Uh, we're going to be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Listen for the trumpet, folks. It's coming soon. Number 11, win souls. The last mention of Caesar is right here. All the saints salute you, chiefly they that are of Caesar's household. You say, oh, they're going to send troops in and occupy America. Oh, good, go witness to them. They sent troops in to occupy Israel, didn't they? What did the disciples do? Led them to Christ. I don't think the disciples sat around worrying about, oh, did you know the Romans are going to send another thousand troops to Bethlehem? Oh, really? Hey, get some more tracks, guys. Let's go. That's got to be the attitude we take. He that winneth souls is wise. During a civil war, this big old country boy from Alabama signed up to go fight the war. Man, he's sick of them Yankees down here invading our territory, you know, so he got him a rifle, got him a backpack, and went off and joined the army. He showed up for battle and said, reporting for duty, sir. Sergeant said, son, we're glad you're here. Man, we need recruits bad. He said, son, your job is to guard this trench right here. Soldier said, Sarge, I didn't come to guard no trench. I come to fight Yanks, and they're right over there. Can I go fight them? He said, no, son, you don't understand. We're dug in, they're dug in, and we're waiting for orders. Guard the trench right here. So the old country boy started marching back and forth in the mud, you know. He's getting madder by the minute. He said, man, I didn't come here to march in the mud. I come to fight Yanks. And they're right over there. Why can't I go fight them? <laughs> Finally, he worked himself up into a frenzy. He dropped everything, 
jumped up out of the trench and ran screaming and yelling across no man's land straight for the Yankee trench. A one-man rebel charge. The Yanks were stunned. They thought, wow, this guy's trying to commit suicide. He ran all the way across no man's land, jumped into the Yankee trench, picked up the first Yankee he saw, and kaboom, knocked him out. One punch. He was a country boy. He'd been toting hay, you know. <laughs> knocked him out. Grabbed his prisoner, climbed up out of the trench, and ran back for the rebel trench. Nobody dared shoot now. He jumped into the rebel trench, and all the rebs gathered around and said, What's that? He said, That's a Yankee. They said, Well, where'd you get him? He said, I got him over yonder. He said, Y'all could have had one if and you'd have wanted one. <laughs> There's a whole bunch more over there. Hey, you know what? I think one of these days we're going to get to heaven, and some people are going to have a crowd gathered around them that they influenced for God. Some of you Sunday school teachers have been faithful for years, and you've influenced thousands of people over time, and you don't even know about some of them. Amen. And you're going to have a crowd of people gathered around you, and somebody else is going to walk up and say, where'd you get all them? you say, well, I got them down yonder on the earth. Y'all could have had one if and you'd have wanted one. What do you want? You want to win somebody to the Lord? Or do you want to find out who throws the ball through the hoop? It just, the longer I live, the less some of those things matter to me. When I was 16 years old, I gave my heart to the Lord. Got saved. Started going to independent, temperamental, fundamental, right-wing, radical, chicken-eating, Baptist church. <laughs> started reading my Bible, growing in the Lord. Boy, it was great. After about two or three months, a friend of mine said, Hey, Kent, let's go to the Heart of Illinois Fair. They've got a fair going on there, carnival, you know. And we're, your, Our job is, from, as this uh, Christian organization is to try to get all these people saved at the fair. I said, I don't know how to get anybody saved. They said, well, don't worry about it. Just come with us. All you got to do is go out and do a survey in the crowd. Ask them a question. Would you like to get to know God better? If they say yes, you bring them to us, and we'll show them how to get saved. I said, great. First night, I went out there, and I'm bringing folks back to the back of the tent, introducing them to the soul winner. They thought, this, this is good, man. This is fun. Third night, I believe, I'm out there talking to this big old football